plus of six. So in this video, we're going to actually talk about going through the pit tuning. So in part one of this video, I talked about the basic setup in Betaflight 4.2. And now we're going to go through and show you how to go ahead and get the pit tuned. So you can see that this quad is actually already pretty well tuned, and I'm going to show you how we get there. So I am cheating a little bit, and so I'm going to make this look easier than it actually is, but, you know, the point is to kind of walk you through how to do it. To do this tune, this video is going to be pretty similar to a lot of the concepts you might have seen in the Stinger Swarm video, Stingy. Um, and then also I'm trying to incorporate a lot of stuff that Mark Spatz talks about with UAV Tech. Um, but he does a lot of black box stuff, and it's hard to apply that directly when you don't have um, when you don't have a black box. And so in this case, we don't. And so I'll kind of show you how I go about trying to incorporate those things and um, still get a decent tune on the micro. So the first thing to do is you need to um, get this at a starting point. So I'm going to go over here to a profile that I set up with starting points. And so what I do is I go to a P that is lower than what I know I need, so 25 in this case. And then I put I and D at 5, which are going to be just enough so there's something there, but not enough that, you know, not so much that there's anything in the way. Uh, feed forward, I turn all the way off. And note with the D, there's just D because I have D min turned off. And I have this set, set up square with um, the P's all across the board set so the same thing, and the D's are going to do the same. The reason for that is one, this quad's pretty symmetric, and two, I don't have a black box, and I can't really tell the difference um, uh, b between the different axes without black box. And what you can do is, based on the assumptions of your weight distribution, after the fact, you can go in and kind of push up one and um, drop the other one a little bit based on, so on the heavier axis, you may need a little bit more um, PID, on the, little, on the lighter axis, you might need less. On this PID now, so what I'm looking for when I'm working on the P is this is going to be too low. And what you're going to get is you're going to get wobbles and bobbles and stuff. But they're slow. They're slow frequency. And so when I go through stuff, you can kind of see this bounce around a little bit. But it's all slow frequency stuff. And you can see that at the end of the flip right there. Watch. It kind of bobbles around a little bit. But it's slow frequency. And if I do a big punch out, there's that eye. I didn't have enough eye in there. That's why it flew off to the side. But if I do a big punch out, you don't get the high frequency P oscillations. So I know that this is too low. I know this is kind of bobbling around. When I try and fly it around, it's kind of hard to fly. Part of that is not having any D or I, but this is a too low P that you have here. So now um, I'm gonna try and bump up this P to show you what too um, high is. I can get it landed. And be careful when you're doing this because I had a flyaway because I was trying to show a rider what too high looks like. And I had a flyaway, so and we don't have any D on there to keep things in check. So we're gonna go with something that should be too high, and I'll show you the difference here. This does take a minute to get through all of these. Alright. So I know in this quad that uh, 60 should be a little high, and what we're going to see now is that instead of having the low frequency stuff, there's basically what I call the, the angry gremlin. See those fast little chatters right there? See that? Yeah, right there. That's an angry little gremlin, and he's a little too fired up, and he gives us those high frequency things. And you see at the end of that bounce back, it's a little too fast. The other thing is if we do a full punch out, my battery's low, I gotta change it out here, but if we do a full punch out, you see that fast oscillation there? That is too much, that's too much P. So I'm gonna change the battery here and then I'm gonna put the P at 43, which is I know um, a pretty good level, and then we'll keep going from there. Hopefully the sound is coming through. I've just got I'm recording the sound just with a little iPhone sitting next to me. But yeah, when I was trying to teach Ryder how to look for these effects of P, I described it as this little this little gremlin that when the P is too low, the gremlin's kind of lazy, and so 
he's not awake, and it's kind of like this sluggish thing, and get these slow oscillations. And then when you get him too fired up, he gets angry, and he starts getting like jittery, and it's kind of like just too nuts. Um, Patrick Clark of um, Project Mockingbird, he calls that um, sort of that it being too hot. So he says like you know if it's kind of too hot. That's that's how I describe it. So there's some different ways. So I know from previously tuning this that 43 um, is pretty good on the P. So we're just going to jump to that. And then I'll show you what this looks like. So now, um, even though I don't have any D or I on this, what you should be able to see is that this is actually pretty darn pliable. And you can see a little bit of that angle. And you gotta, you gotta get that gremlin a little hot because once we bring in the D, it's gonna calm things down. And so if you have it sort of perfect before you bring in a D, it's gonna be a little bit not hot enough. But it's not out of control. And when I did that punch out there, you can see that was pretty smooth. There wasn't really a P oscillation on the punch out. There's probably a little bit, but I'm more focused on the tight end stuff, and so as opposed to like maybe Andy RC who likes a lot, a lot of big punch outs and doing um, inverted yaw rolls, he can't stand oscillations on punch outs, so his tune would be a little bit different than mine. But I'm more interested in getting low and tight, and so I tolerate a little bit of a hot tune, and you can see those little bounces at the end. Those are um, a little bit high frequency, and that's different from those low frequency ones. Okay. But I know 43 works pretty well and so let's go in here and um, add in some D. So you can see now without any D, um, kind of get a feel for this, we can flat pretty well and so as long as we're kind of on the gestures it flies pretty good. But then you can see the little corrections we need to calm those little vibrations down. And this is going to be tricky to land. No! Hang on. Um, so from a previous tuning, so that's D that's too low. Let's jump to a D that's too high. And let me go to, I know, let me see what I want. I want a D of 33. So let's go up to 50. Let's take this too high. Yeah, 53 is fine. So it's for illustration purposes anyways. So what you're looking for now on the D, when the D is too high, this is going to kind of get sluggish and vague. And this is actually not too bad. But there's a little weirdness in it. My sticks feel a little delayed. And it does have good prop wash handling. You can see that right there. There's a little bit, nothing terrible. And then let's check the punch out. There's a little bit of oscillation there. So when I do the um, straight punch out, see if you can hear it. It's not terrible. There's a little bit there, but anyways, to me this just feels a little sluggish and it feels a little bit too much deep. If you're going for kind of real smooth looking camera stuff, you might go with a higher D. If you really hate prop wash, you might go with a little bit higher D. But I like responsiveness and less worried about those other things. And so let's drop the D down to where I liked it from before. And watch this kind of prove me wrong too, you know, as I'm retuning it. All right, so now I've got my D where I think I want it. So I still have good prop wash control there, a little bit, but not bad. But I feel more alive on the sticks. I feel like it's responding better. I don't feel sluggishness. And even without any eye, you know, I'm just PND, I can fly this pretty well. A couple other things we check. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, I gotta grab that. Hang on. Okay, so a couple other things we're going to check is with the D, we're going to do some punch outs and some rolls. 
I think I bent a prop or something. Uh, a little bit of warble there, not too bad. I think I bent a prop. Okay, that was pretty clean there. So I think that's that's pretty good. And then when we check our rolls, we want a nice smooth finish on the roll. And you can see no weird bounce backs or anything like that. And then last part is checking our prop wash. Making sure there's not any terrible prop wash in there. And that looks pretty good there. And do one more punch out. That's pretty smooth. And then let's see where we're at battery wise. Uh, I'm going to go in here and bump up the eye, but not, um, well, actually let me show you what the difficulty with eye. Okay, so right now our eye is too low, and you're going to notice this in a couple places. Um, one is if you're going into like power loops, you see kind of it's like falling not quite straight there, that's a little bit too low on the eye. That wasn't too bad. And then the other place where, it's, for me, it really kind of picks it out is when I'm trying to do this stuff. This is on too low an eye. This is really hard to do because it kind of drifts around. And so that eye is really going to help you with tracking. So your eye, when you're kind of diving, um, when you're trying to do power loops, and you're trying to do on kind of precision stuff around the bushes and things like that. The eye really helps your attitude hold, helps you come in. Um, on bigger quads, they look a lot for uh, the throbbles. So as you're punching out, you look for, let me see if I can show you that. I'll actually throw this on here. So we'll leave this on too low of an eye. Let's see if we got any throbbles, so any, any bobbles on throttle up. It's pretty straight. I can't really show you that, but anyways, what you'd be looking for is when you pop the throttle, does it does it move around on you? Like, does it, you know, pop the nose, drop the nose? Does it tilt to one side or start to spin? And I'm not really noticing that here, um, but where I notice it the most is when I'm trying to come in here, like I just showed you, where this to me is really hard. It kind of doesn't want to hold its attitude as it's coming in here. And so let's put some eye in there to fix that up. Okay. So we're going to go to high eye. And I'm going to go up to, let's see, I know I want 60. Let's go up to an eye of 100. And what happens, what you're looking for when it's too high, is that it's just going to feel just kind of overly stiff. And it actually, to me, feels like it starts to slide when the eye is too high. So. Um, instead of feeling locked in, like so I tends to help you kind of feel locked in, but instead of doing that, it actually inhibits you so much that you feel like kind of it feels too stiff and can actually slide because it's not responding to you. To you. Right, so this should be too high of an eye. <coughs> Let's see how that works. So for me, when I'm kind of getting in here and trying to go tight, this isn't bad. Um, but it just it feels like it's being lazy, like it's not kind of keeping up with me. And when I come, kind of come in here and do that kind of stuff, it feels a little sluggish compared to how I want it to. So let's put the I have one on here. All right, and so the I have one is 60. So I'm going to bump that down a little bit. And hopefully, again, like before, this doesn't prove me wrong and watch me say, oh, I like the 100. But Prior one, I liked 100 on it, and so let's, or 60. Well, let's try that and see if I can show you what 
this stuff becomes less and less obvious. The P is really easy to illustrate. The D is pretty easy to illustrate. And this stuff becomes less less obvious. So now I've got an I of 60. <clears throat> and I'm, what I'm looking for now is that it should feel really responsive, yet locked in. And so when we do something like a, a power loop, you should be able to track down and hit the gap like you want to right there. Um, did you see how nice that really tracked? I wonder if that was luck, probably. And when I come in here to do this kind of, it just holds the attitude really well. And so this becomes a whole lot easier because that eye is locking in that attitude. And then I can just make the little micro adjustments that I need to. So to me, this feels like a pretty good eye. You know, when we do little throttle pops, that was me actually hitting the yaw. But when we do little throttle pops, it's not moving anywhere um, that I don't want it to. And then the last thing is, so now when I'm doing this little micro stuff, I want this crisped up a little bit. And that's where feed forward comes in. This tune right here is perfectly flyable. This is sort of like a 3.57 tune without the feed forward. And this is actually a pretty good tune, but we can just make it a tiny bit better. And the way we make it a tiny bit better is with the feed forward. And so the feed forward is sort of like the push. Uh, Mark Spatz calls it the push. I think of it as bringing in a set, second gremlin. So the first gremlin, what he works on is um, getting, let's see what feed forward I want. Uh, I want 60, 60, 65. Okay. So the second gremlin comes in and handles the push. So when you push the stick, he moves the quad. And the first gremlin, then all he has to do is correct the, you know, the little uh, disconnects. And so it's like having two little gremlins in here. And well, let me go up. Let me do. Let me do a crazy high one again. So let's go. Let's take feed forward up to 100. So if the feed forward is too high, what you actually end up with, and we can't see it in the black box, but this is what I'm looking for when I'm feeling it is that the feed forward is actually overshooting and then the P has to fight back. And so um, the way I explain it is riders that the, the two little gremlins start to fight each other. So the one that's doing the push, the ones that's responding to the stick is getting too aggressive and telling the quad to over move. And then so the original gremlin has to go and try and fight back. <coughs> and the feeling I get from it, which I'm feeling right here, it's hard to show you, is it feels a little disconnected from the sticks. Instead of being more locked in, it has this weird vagueness and it feels less good than it did without the feed forward at all. And so that's kind of where you know that feed forward is too high, is that instead of feeling better and crisper, it gets weird and vague to me. That's what I feel. And that's what I'm feeling here with it at 100. And again, let's go ahead and try and get this to where I think I need it. <clears throat> and checking my notes again, I have my cheat sheet. I think I liked it at 60. I had it up as high as 80. I think 80 is fine. And feed forward is, I think it's like one of the less sensitive parameters. There's a bigger range on it. But, um, and I had this, I was flying a little bit on 80, but yesterday it was really windy and it did better. Um, at 50 or uh, at 60 and so I kind of dropped them down so I wanted 55 here. On yaw I do tend to run a little bit less feed forward um, just because you don't want your yaw being uh, kind of disproportionate. Right, let's see how this feels. Hopefully this feels good and proves me right. right. So what I have here now is what I feel is a pretty locked in quad feels like it really responds to what I'm telling it to do and the feed forward actually may still be a touch high but I feel I can tell it exactly where to go and I can make these little of course I can but I can make these little micro adjustments and get that and I can make those micro adjustments and I feel like the quad follows the stick everywhere it goes without it getting doing weird stuff and feeling vague so I'm going to pop one last battery here and 
kind of show the final sort of rundown um, check of everything. And then the last part is, um, which I, tend, I haven't been using, is um, D-min. And the reason I haven't been using D-min is because, although it can be helpful, I just seem to get more weird bobbles with it. Let's see if we got a motor jammed up. And I'm trying to do this in one take. I don't feel like going in here and editing out the little pieces. Um, so sorry about the little downtime, but you're not paying for this content anyways, so that's what happens for free content. Of course I got something in the motor now, but <clears throat> Alright, so I feel like now I have a really nice flying quad. I feel like I can put it exactly where I want to put it. I feel like it's going to track really straight. And I feel like I can make little micro adjustments on it. I'm kind of getting in here for this tight stuff. And to double check everything and do some full punch outs. That sounded pretty smooth. There's maybe a little bit of yarble. Again, I'm less worried about that because I just don't fly that stuff more often. It's pretty darn smooth to me anyways. And then we look for how it's tracking, so we're going to do a big kind of split S and make sure that falls perfectly straight. And so you could see that you would be able to hit a gap because it's not moving funny. Unfortunately, it's not windy, and so I'm able to put it where I want it without wind moving it you know, too much artificially. And also, I feel like it, it really holds kind of that attitude really well check our rolls. Nothing weird at the end of the rolls. So that looks good. And then when I come in here and make little quick moves, I feel like that's moving with my stick. It's maybe a little delayed. It could be maybe something a little bit um, that I could tune up a little bit better. But overall this is to me a pretty nice feeling quad. I can now put it where I want it and make those little micro corrections like that when I mess up my line and that's my tune all right till next time cheers